Hello, greetings, how are you? My name is Kalana Kale, and I am here to bring to you some valuable information regarding our upcoming conference right here with Rainbow Push Coalition. We have a power-packed conference that is going to bring you information regarding policy, equitable changes within our education, as well as technology, sports, entertainment. You do not want to miss this upcoming Rainbow Push Coalition Conference. So it begins July 17th. That's right, Saturday, July 17th. And we have all kinds of information and people from even across the seas internationally going to be sharing with you information that this can help you go forth in your community. So please tune in, sign up, and make sure that you want to be a part of this exciting, exciting event. So right now, I would like you to participate and just listen on one of our entertainers that is going to be participating in the conference. And we have a whole line of entertainers, entertainers that are going to participate with interviews and share the stage. It's gonna be virtual, just like this. So, Mr. Archie Davis, thank you for joining us. We would like you to just begin by introducing yourself and sharing a little bit of information of who you are and what is your role in the entertainment industry. How's it going? My name is Archie Davis, um, SVP of Marketing at RCA Records, co-founder of Proximity Media, um, which is a media company founded by Ryan Kugler, and co-founder of the OPM company. I also started Six Course Inc. and Music Group, which is my record label in partnership with RCA Records. We know a little bit about you now, and we're excited that you are here to share this information with us. But you worked on a very, very powerful piece. I mean, just looking at and listening to you, you're very gung-ho and grounded in working and curating individuals by making sure that they have the tools that they need to succeed not only with their own personal goals, but to catapult and be powerful, power-packed in the African-American community and just in the entertainment and creative space in general. So with the recent work that you've done, Judas and the Black Messiah, the movie and the soundtrack, wow, kudos, all kind of snaps. I mean, we are just so very proud of you and that work. Can you talk a little bit about that? I did work on the Judas and the Black Messiah movie and soundtrack. My role in that project, I was executive music producer of the film and also distributed the soundtrack through my record label as well as executive music producer of the soundtrack. So how was your role? And I mean, how did it even come about? My role was to round up the vision of whatever the director who was Shock the King at the time was and make sure that I was actually kind of elaborating on what his vision was for what this film would represent. Um, and I'm thankful for the opportunity. I feel like we were able to make oh. a masterpiece. Dope. You all, I mean, I'm I'm amazed. I'm excited to be talking with Mr. Davis. So I hope you all are excited to be listening because this man has even earned an Oscar for this soundtrack. We're, like I said, we're very proud of you here at Rainbow Push and everyone that has been privy to watch the movie as well as listen to the soundtrack. How did that feel to just earn such a prestigious award? Oscar for this soundtrack. You know, it, and it's funny because it wasn't the entire soundtrack that won an Oscar. It was one song in the film, which was Fight For You by her. Um... She and I had a conversation, I would say like October, November of last year, as we were trying to lock this project out, finish it up. She was like, you know, Arch, I really feel like I could deliver you a masterpiece. Um, I'd say about a week and a half, two weeks later, I was blessed with the gift that she gave us and fight for you. Um, and, you know, to say that we knew that that song would have Oscar potential, we never really know. Um, 
the academy kind of makes their own decisions year after year. But I think the stars just really aligned for her this year. She's been having an incredible year from the Super Bowl performance to Grammy Record of the Year win. Um, that, that really helped set us up for an incredible Oscar award season. We know that with artistry, it, it, it causes like-minded individuals to gravitate towards one another and to want to help each other go to the next level. I mean, visionaries, focus, you know, right brain versus left brain and just want to dig on into these projects. So what role did the soundtrack and the movie play in the culture? You know, everybody says we're giving it to the people, it's for the culture and everything that's going on right now in the States, across the borders, all around the globe. So can you just enlighten us a little bit about this particular piece and this particular project? Why was it so important for the culture, to you and for those of us at large? I think it's first off acknowledging that like the role this man played in the world um, in Chairman Fred Hampton. I think for me, from the start when we started this learning process by way of him and Mama Akua and Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. Um, I think the legacy dictated the culture more than anything. Um, we were able to shed light on an incredible man and a terrible, tragic assassination by the FBI. But I would definitely say that the culture that this bred was just we're not stopping. Um, and then a lot of the conversations I had with Mama Akua for Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. to be assassinated at the age of 21, and here we are 51, 50 years later, he didn't, he didn't die. Um, and I think the goal of the music that we created, the artists that we asked to be a part of it, the acting that was a part of the film, the timestamp that this all represented um, was for those reasons and and really helps really in a lot of ways kind of I guess the best way to put it is shine a light on the culture that we kind of want to see from ourselves. Um, this was a project where I saw a lot of people come together, a lot of people that I never met before. Um, and it felt like a labor of love all the way around. So I think that love is the culture and that energy is what we were able to really display. But I, it was, that's the vision of Shaka and Ryan and the entire film squad. So you're about creating change activism within the entertainment industry, giving culture and creativity and light and color to the, the creative artists that you're working with and the project and making sure that it's able to marry together. So with that being said and, and working with artists and making sure that you execute the project effectively, um, how do you feel with with the community and what's going on right now, the soundtrack itself, what are some of the, you know, pivotal points in creating this piece of music as well as producing it and coming up with the, the headliners and the music that was going to really just speak to the culture, speak to the people and speak across generations for what is going on right now with police brutality and the environment in our politics. I think this movie is important because it makes sure that we don't forget. Um, a lot of people don't know this about me, but my freshman year of college, I was accused of a shooting that happened that I wasn't at. Um, some frat guys that saw, said they saw a guy that looked just like me. <laughs> that was running with some guys that shot one of their frat brothers. 
and I had three private investigators follow me for about four months. Um, after that, I went into a real hole, um, almost flunked out of college. I didn't have any family around, except my cousin who, who was my roommate. Um, but you know, after we kind of figured that situation out, after they took me out of class and all my classmates thought I was a criminal, I decided to go back into my shell and I started a radio show um, that I promoted through my MySpace page on campus. Kind of helped get me out of my shell a little bit, but it also led me in the right direction to do what I'm doing now. Um, but my goal and my life's purpose since that moment has been to make sure that every child, every black boy, every black girl understands that this can happen to them also. Um, just because you're a good kid doesn't mean anything. And I think it's that awareness that this film brings to us just to let us know, like, you're never too young. Um, we're always a threat. Um, there's always a want to eliminate us and the greatness that we possess. Mm, I can completely, completely feel, feel that. Definitely. And I know our listeners can as well. So with a brief explanation of how and why this movie is so important, um, you know, you've been able to share a lot with us today and, you know, talk about how impactful um, this piece of work is to you and your ability to map out the dream of the writers, the creators, the psalmist um, is so important to your work so that it marries with your, your label and the other artists as well as the viewers and listeners. So can you just briefly um, talk to us a little bit about even more how that has been able to work together for you making sure that you are um, creating a project that can be seen by an audience and heard by the overall listeners um, so that we, we really get the point that you're trying to share with us. The richness, and I don't mean rich in a monetary term, I mean rich in a sense of bond, love, family, integrity, respect, self-worth. Um, Chairman was such a rich man. Um, and I think for us to see that display for a man, forget the racism, the e-racism of what this was supposed to be for us to be able to shed a light on this story in this time post George Floyd, even though this movie was shot before George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey and Breonna Taylor and all the other host of names that we could list. I think this shows us what that richness really represented and what we really look like when we pull together as a people, not black people. I mean, as a whole white, Asian, black, everybody. So in shifting the culture, in creating change in the industry, in being a power packed artist and, um, you know, philanthropist in your own right, then, I mean, what is next? You know, what projects are on the horizon? Because you have done so much. And again, kudos and creativity and snaps and claps to everything that you have done we thank you from the culture from the bottom of our heart with rainbow push and our listeners our young people that have been able to see it and be a part and privy to this conversation and listening to this um so i mean what what more what's the next step what is mr archie davis coming up with now we are so eager to hear just a little bit give us just a little bit because um i know that you're working on a lot and with a man that has so much integrity and goals embodied in him and his work then i'm sure that there is a long list of projects that you have but you know give us just a little bit about what you're working on please I'm currently finishing the space jam film um that'll be out july 16th starring lebron james and co-starring don Cheadle incredible filmmaker and director by the name of um, Malcolm Lee 
who's 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 leading our, our entire charge in this project, Ryan Coogler, is also producing that film alongside Maverick Carter and the Spring Hill Company, which is LeBron James's film company. Working on that, starting the process of what will be Creed Three, another project called Bitter Root that we're doing with Regina King, um, and then on the music side really continuing to expand on the Six Course Music Group label. Artist by the name of Protege, who's from Jamaica, um, did a label with him and some incredible women. Artist by the name of Nana and the OPM Company with Dom Kennedy. Um, Westside with Love 3 will be out this year. Um, and I built a studio in Culver City. If you guys ever make your way out this way, would love the opportunity to show it to you 12,000 square feet huge recording room, four writing rooms, conference room, podcast production room. Um, but just continue, continuing to expand and build. Well, there you have it, everyone. Movies, music, goals. Oh, my. We are so excited to have had you, you know, visiting with us and having this brief conversation um, about going forward and what you have on the horizons. We thank you for spending this bit of time with us. Looking forward to seeing you in July at the Rainbow Push Convention. And like I said, everyone, you do not want to miss this conference that is coming up. Rainbow Push Coalition and all of our affiliates are making sure that we are coming together, bringing you a power-packed international conference starting once again, July 17th. So make sure that you sign up and be a part of what we have to offer because it is something that is going to be beneficial to the entire community. Have a great day.